They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad over here on Helix Squirrel Down Under? It is good to see you folks. Uh, it's been a real, real busy uh, week, two weeks. It's been crazy, but um, I kind of, I did this Parkinson piece on the main channel. I thought, man, I'm really going to get into doing some more Parkinson. He does some great interviews and everything. I said, oh, that's right. I want to do Les Patterson on Parkinson and uh, Dave Medna as well. So Dave Medna is coming down the road. I did Lily Savage on Parkinson on the main channel. That was great. But Parkinson just did a great show, I think. Uh, he was a really good presenter. I just saw a video actually the other day um, that says Les Parkinson opens up about his drinking problems. Uh, I'd be interested to kind of watch that and just kind of see, you know, it's, it's always interesting to see someone come forth and talk about issues they've had, especially somebody um, in a famous position like him. So I may end up watching that. Whether I react or not, I don't know, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, I uh, Just interesting that, you know, people can be so successful and still have something like that going on in their life. is crazy to me. But uh, this is uh, Sir Les Patterson, Barry Humphreys, 1982. This is part one. I believe part two is when he came on as Dame Edna. I think that's what part two is. So uh, let's get into this and let's check it out. And uh, yeah, it's your first time here. Welcome to Helix Squirrel Down Under. Please subscribe before you take off. It's time. Tonight is one of the most celebrated Australian statesmen of modern times. He started his career as the entertainment officer at a club in Sydney and has risen to the heights of being the Australian cultural attaché to the court of St. James. I couldn't agree more with the critic who said that he impugns the fundamental refinement of the Australian character. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. <laughs> And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. He's drooling all over himself. <laughs> I've got a, I must do a handful of Vaseline or something. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too bad. Oh, dear. Now, of course, images. Im Oh, sorry, Mike. What is it I've got in my hands? Oh, it's a, it's a, it's an ointment I'm supposed to use. <laughs> I was, I was just giving myself a quick application before the shower. Oh, I'm supposed to use an applicator, but I generally do. It. No worries. So, uh, yeah. Now let's let's talk. <laughs> You'll be all right on your next trip to the Philippines, mate. <laughs> Are you with me? No worry. Now, this thing about image is obviously terribly important to me. That's part of your job. Now, what is it? What's the image that you're trying to, to project? I think you'd better phrase that again, Michael. I think it... <laughs> What is the image that I am bloody successful in projecting, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? And that is, as a, Australia, as a thinking organism. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very many moons ago. What you do to old Brian Humphrey, you just heard Edley, the poor bastard with ashes. <laughs> I seen him out there. You? Oh, Christ, you must have given him a rough time. <laughs> We talked about getting on the grog. Oh, Christ, eh? It's stuck into him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very good to be here on the Parky Show. You know, you could say this is the International Year of Australia already, couldn't you, Mike? Well, you could. It's been fantastic, the publicity we're getting, and largely due to the efforts of my good self. You know, it wasn't many moons ago that they thought we were a bunch of rough diamonds down. <laughs> but you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. I'm telling you that. No worries. Well, I suppose that they talk about culture, the main thing that people know Australia for now, the, the movie industry, the films, Australian films. Have you got anything to do with them at all? Yes, I kicked it off. You did you? <laughs> oh, yes, I was... Uh... <laughs> I was very much instrumental in getting movies off the ground in Australia. They'd been going along a long time with Chip Rafferty and that uh, fraternity. But they needed to be dragged kicking and screaming into the 20th century, Mike. And uh, I'm very proud of 
I'm very proud of the role. I'm very proud of the role that I've played there. You know, the trouble with the film industry, as it is with the yachts in general today, is that the, the poofter element. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't mind what people do in the privacy of their own homes. Don't get me wrong on that score, ladies and gentlemen. Please. <laughs> you know, I see eye to eye with old Ken Livingston in that particular matter. But what I'd like to say is this, that, you know, there are a lot of... Uh, the industry needs a fair bit of weeding out, and, uh, you know, it's rife with the poofters in Australia. Now, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I... Pufta is, uh, is, is, he's referring to people that are homosexual. Is that I think that's what Pufta means, right? I'm pretty sure. That's what I, in my mind, that's what it means. I know I've heard that before. It is here. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a lovely idea for a film a few years ago. It was going to be, it was about a football team uh, going to the bush. It was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock. <laughs> and uh, by the time... Are you with me? <laughs> By the time the Puff Mafia, or the Puffia as I call them, had got onto that, they'd cut, turned them all into Sheilas, drifting around in the nursery curtains, and getting eaten by the abos in there. <laughs> well, what about a film like Gallipoli, which has had tremendous critical acclaim, both here and in the movie? Yeah, you see, the movie industry's got out of my hands. Gay Lippoli, in my opinion, is a better description of that thought. Yeah, you're Two boy. fellas, I don't say they're shirt lifters. I don't say that. I don't say they're shirt lifters. But they could be. They could be. And that's how it comes across, you know? Giving the Turks the wrong idea. You know? Mind you, they've had the wrong idea for a year or two, haven't they, eh? Uh, no worries. Do you, do, do you know many uh, people within the film industry intimately, though? I mean, I'm thinking of actors or actresses. <laughs> well, I do, naturally. I've had to... <laughs> you hear the boys in the band over there, for God's sake, eh? <laughs> That'll do, fellas, eh? <laughs> He's so... I, I love it. It's such a... It's a to me, like this character, it might seem like it's an oddball character that just kind of, he just kind of babbles and rants. I mean, he comes out, he's got the screwed up, stained, gross, disgusting clothes, his shit hanging from his nose, he's drooling on himself. But this is, this to me is a calculated character. Like every move he's making is made in the sense of this character on purpose. This isn't just shooting from the hip, I don't think. I think you see more hip shooting when he's Dame Edna, although there's a lot of calculation there as well. I would imagine he shoots best from the hip as Barry Humphreys. Less is second, probably very close. And then Edna would be third. Just from the pieces I've seen, it seems like a bunch of just nonsense micmac that he's doing. But I feel like this is all very well calculated. All this, it's, it's calculated to seem like a confusing bunch of garble. But he, you can tell by watching this guy. I mean, you can tell by the fact that he's himself and then he plays two other characters that are totally opposite. But on top of that, you can just tell by watching him. Very, very intelligent comedian. Um, many comedians. High on the intellect scale, obviously. But uh, I just, when I watch this character and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to what he's saying and I'm paying attention to what he's doing, his manners, and I'm realizing, like, this is all so well done. It's it's great. This is a, a piece of it's a piece of work, a piece of art. <laughs> He's a piece of work, don't get me wrong, but a piece of art too. No, I've been a bit I've done a bit of casting, Mike. I have. I've done a bit of I mean it's not for nothing I'm known as the Protestant Lou Gray. I'm not. I am. We've got a lot in common, you know. Well, with a couple of tycoons, and it's significant, isn't it? That old Lou's enterprise is being taken over by an Aussie corporation, an Aussie conglomerate, a conglomerate. And uh, they're a bit afraid, of course, that it'll lose its Englishness, but old Lord Grey, English? Well, rumour has it he's a Bulgarian tap dancer. I don't know. <laughs> but he's very nice and a close personal friend, I hasten to yes, say. Well, you've got many, many. But a lot of the actresses, you know, I mean, uh, I know them all personally. I can't name names on this show because... Uh, you know, there's been moments when 
when my fidelity to my wife has been put to a pretty severe test. <laughs> and come off second best, I can tell you. Can you think of uh, any, I mean, was this a question of girls being, being forward, being uh, oh, overwhelmed by your sexuality? I do get a bit. You know, I was... Uh, I had an embarrassing experience uh, in a London taxi. Uh, hmm? uh, yes. We were... I had this little <laughs> lass. She was a star of one of my films. And uh, we, I was showing her the sights of London. You know, Buckminster Castle, St Paul's <laughs> Abbey. <laughs> Trafalgar Circus, and we're driving around. <laughs> and I kid you not, you know, this little Sheila done a streak in the backseat of the car. Yes. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> And we got to our destination, the driver says, that'll be so-and-so, you know. And uh, he says, how are you going to pay me? And she, fl oh, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but she done an Erica. <laughs> an Erica. She done an Erica, but not the top part. She flashed the map of Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the first time I've ever heard that used. Now, no. <laughs> For those of you who aren't too crash out of the geography, <laughs> Tasmania is a triangular continent. <laughs> a bit on the bushy side. <laughs> no, please. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> anyway... To cut a long story short, the driver said, haven't you got anything smaller? <laughs> the driver says, haven't you got anything smaller? That's great. What a closing line. That was awesome. Uh, she flashed her Tasmania. I'm going to, I'm going to at some point work that into a conversation somehow. Um, I'll like a bunch of conversations over the next week now. Now that's going to become like something I'm going to have to, find a way to use i know it's bad it's so bad but it's so true uh so that was uh that was less good old les patterson barry humphreys on uh on the michael parkinson show and um that was that was some good stuff is this part one maybe there is part two with less i don't know the, the drooling oh my god oh so gross but so great um again I find this guy to be a calculated genius when he plays these characters. I really do. So uh, that was really enjoyable. It was great. I, I kind of made my comments throughout. I hope you folks enjoyed it with me. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that uh, it's more shoot from the hip or more calculated when he plays Les Patterson or even Dame Edna? Let me know in the comment section below, will you? I'll catch up with you folks real soon. I hope things are going well over in Australia. Be good, all right? Jeff and them snakes and spiders. I'll catch you soon. Scroll up.